to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift up our hands and bless His name. Bless His name. Wave your hands from side to side to Jesus, the one who sits upon the throne. Go ahead and bless him. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him with your understanding. He is why we are here. He is why we remain. Worship him. Call him everything you know him to be. Savior, deliverer, lifter, helper. For he is God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Search all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I look high and low, still couldn't find nobody. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I look high and low. There of the worlds and they that dwell therein, Majesty. Father, we bless you for everything that is good in this house, for everything that is excellent in this house, for everything that glorifies Jesus in this house we return glory we are wise enough to know that except God be with a man there are things we cannot do Nicodemus came to Jesus and said Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him and Lord while the world in their honesty credit the achievements to us may we remain ushers pointing them to you may we be unashamed and vocal about letting the world know that without you there is nothing absolutely nothing we can do you are the force behind everything good in this house you are the mystery behind the results that we so lavishly command. But Lord, let the world know that beyond our results, we love you. 
and that we are desperate for you that we love you more than things we love you more than positions we love you more than ministry we love you more than prayer we love you more than bible study we love you more than church and religion we love you more than spiritual titles we love you more than heaven for you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god. you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone. you are god alone you are god alone from before time Thank you, Jesus. Tonight we have come as proof that we desperately desire your presence. Tonight we have come as proof that we trust you. Tonight we have come as proof that we remain hungry and intentional for knowledge, for growth, for transformation. We have come to honor the potency of your word the ministry of your spirit we have come to you the rabbi of all the ages the wisdom of God we pray that the hallowed bread of the spirit be opened and served us tonight that we may eat and indeed grow therefore Lord we declare that tonight there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles Amen. that whilst your word comes tonight and as you challenge us and expose us to the mysteries of the kingdom let the sick not return sick Amen. let the oppressed not return oppressed Amen. let there be all kinds of manifestations of your grace your love and your power and as always we vow that you remain glorified you remain lifted in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we thank God for strength as we travel from place to place. Just two very quick functions. The first, I thought to do that by myself and to do it even before the word, before we begin to teach the word. Um, like we announced for a long time, many people have been waiting for us to open up doors for the workforce. There are several people who truly desire to serve in various capacities. We have allowed some time so that we can build, we can establish ourselves and so that the current workers can get to understand the spirit and the ethics um, of the ministry. I think we have achieved that so there are a few departments that are now open. I think three of them, as I have, there might be more, but at least three for now. The aesthetics department, those who are responsible for the stage and uh, beautification of the house, sanctuary keepers, and so on and so forth. They are particularly looking for those who are skilled and experienced in interior decor, exterior decor, and you have a passion for the house of God. It takes skill alongside a genuine heart for God to be effective as far as service is concerned in the house of God. So everyone who has been graced, gifted, and trained in this area, please do well to meet your representative at the PR desk. The PR desk is just after the main auditorium. Please do well to meet them after the service. Be a bit patient, and they'll be glad to meet with you and um, guide you on what else to do similarly the 
The technical and sound department is open for new members, those who manage our sound and light within this hall, all the halls, the overflows outside. All interested persons who are skilled can meet the representative at the PR desk also. The PR desk will also provide information on what else to do. And then third, I don't know if this is the last, but the medical department, our medical team are in need. Um, you know that God has blessed us. We're a very large house. And we thank God for the skilled doctors, lab technicians, nurses, paramedics who have been very active, very, very zealous and very sacrificial. But then they need more hands. And please, let's do well if you are a doctor, you are a medical practitioner or anything around the paramedic you are more than welcome to be part of the department um, you can meet us at the same pr desk please do well officials let's be sure to make sure that there are people who can help separate these ones who will be going there and then fourth the the security and transport department is also open all who help to manage the logistics around security and transport all interested persons can meet their representatives at the balcony now the balcony by the right after the service if you're confused please find any usher or any official at all and they'll lead you to that location the balcony at the right and then number five okay we have a number now media and productions department this one um let me add my voice to their plea because we're building up there is a greater vision for this so we need a lot of professionals especially so the media and productions department they are currently open for skilled people those who are um, professionals in the area of productions and anything related to mass communication please do well and um, you can apply meet your representative at the balcony also the balcony by the right after service yes what happens after the grace please let someone just be in there and indicate so that they can follow him there's no point this is a very large facility that has many areas and um, i'm not sure many people will easily be able to locate this so let there be an official who just stands waving his hands and indicating what department is leading them to so that they can just follow him praise the name of the lord and then we're really honored tonight to have a very very great man in our midst hallelujah amen this is a house of honor and this is a man who um truly loves the lord but then he has come to symbolize authority in the area of faith and family he is truly a voice that when you follow he can lead you from anywhere to anywhere i just thought we should honor him before we get to the word ladies and gentlemen please be upstanding as we honor pastor kingsley okonko god bless you sir thank you thank you thank you you're welcome god bless you please be seated hallelujah amen if you have not listened to pastor kingsley um i think you should begin immediately there is there is there is a lot to learn his wisdom is profound yes profound thank you sir amen praise the name of the lord jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 we remain resolute in our commitment to feed god's people he says and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart which will feed you in knowledge and understanding the primary assignment of a man of god is to ensure that believers who have been saved and have been planted in a spiritual family that they are fed and taught the word of god and the content of that word is doctrine we have discussed it here doctrine is the course curriculum that makes for the growth of the believer and week in week out we continue to explore different facets of the kingdom life 
to the end that number one we get to know the lord the more then we understand his ways then we obtain grace and help from god to represent him very effectively hallelujah praise the name of the lord tonight um, i'll begin a teaching that i believe will end up as a series because um we may not be able to exhaust it tonight and in an attempt to explain the things that happen around our society you know i have i have said this and and i thank god we have people here politicians business people members of parliament so i'm happy because every time we learn this we are happy because we can take this there is there is um we we can apply this and then it helps not just towards kingdom advance but also towards nation building any nation and any territory is a reflection of number one the health and the strength of the spiritual conviction of the people that live within that territory every territory is a reflection of the spiritual conviction or otherwise of the people that live within that territory which invariably is a product or is a reflection of the quality of the spiritual voices that feed the people so when you pick anyone in abuja or any part of the world at all at random and engage the believers there their level and extent of spiritual understanding is a report card that shows the quality of the shepherds within that territory if there is a problem with the understanding of the average christian then the men and the women of god within that territory are to be blamed that means there is an imbalance or there is error that is coming from the pulpit because people are largely they will act in honor to their convictions which come from the propositions that come from the altar so if we want to correct the living what we see in our society among other factors we have to re-examine the kind the extent and the quality of spiritual information that comes from the pulpit effective living is a product of effective thinking when people think wrong they will live wrong when they think right they will live right the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe that means anything following you is proof of what you believe you don't when you are tired of seeing what has been following you you don't drive it away physically change what you believe everything that follows you comes in honor to something you are believing if trouble is always following you it may be empowered by demons but principally there is something about your understanding and your perspective and your approach to life that authorizes those ills to follow you if favor goodness and mercies if, if all these these positive attributes are following you there is something that your understanding is doing as far as making for their continuity around your life are we together so our assignment principally is to expose us to what the bible calls the ways of god and let me tell you this in as much as the curriculum that makes for our growth is finite um there is there is a vast body of knowledge spiritual knowledge we need to learn about who we are in christ the reality of our positional advantage our, our oneness with christ we need to understand the economic system of the kingdom this is what makes for the supplies and the provisions of the saints we need to understand the fact that we live in a world that is plagued by demons principalities and powers jesus and scripture did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone there is another species of beings that cohabit with us and whether we are prepared or not they are interested in our affairs and so he teaches us how to manage our living such that we live victorious in spite of satan and his cohorts are we together we need to learn principles that make for territorial dominion i told you that the gospel is divided into two there is the message that saves then there is the ideology that transforms if the only thing you receive is the message that saves 
you are saved but your territory may not be safe s-a-f-e it takes the ideology of the gospel the value system of the kingdom to permeate systems and structures so that now christ and his purposes are institutionalized not just in the hearts of men but across every strata of human activities this is the only way that christ becomes enthroned not just in our hearts but in our environment it's unfortunate all over the world and even in our nation right now we're in we're in serious times of crisis from economic crisis to high rates of crime terrorism i just returned from zaria and um, sadly and unfortunately the north is beginning to be um, a reflection of something that we have prayed never to happen did you know that every one terrorist every one troublemaker was once a baby in the hand of a woman is that true something transformed those individuals from babies to become now living like beasts every deliverer was once a baby in the hands of a woman including jesus in the flesh that means when we see the decadence in society the decadence in society is a reflection of something that is wrong and and please just allow me to express my passion for a few minutes trying to solve societal problems by just coming up with corrective measures as it were will not ultimately achieve that goal is that true thank god for the prison cells thank god for the police thank god for the military but fundamentally you need to understand that the things that continue to plague society historically is proof that something fundamentally is wrong with the value system of the people generally speaking we live in honor to and of our convictions whatever you believe eventually you will leave it out is that true when you meet a terrorist now and interview him he will give you an interesting perspective about life his perspective and his conviction is what motivates his passion to cause mayhem and destruction and even at the detriment of the advancement of his society he believes he's doing right if you meet a good man who is blessing people lifting people educating people behind what he's doing there is a value system there is a conviction is that true that means we have to be careful we have to carefully fashion and design the value systems that we communicate because value systems are dangerous people will live in honor of and to those value systems when people reject God in mass, there must be a poisonous information that is being sold that makes God look like a nuisance to civilization. When revival breaks out, in as much as it's the power of God, healing, signs, and wonders, but let me tell you, there is something that must have been done right, and people embrace the value. They see the importance and the value of Jesus Christ. We, when you live in a society that is lawless, a society that does not honor the rule of law, a society that is careless and does not care, people live very irresponsible lives, is a reflection of a faulty value system. I always like to understand the motivation behind things more than the actions. You really solve problems when you dig into the motivation behind things when you address symptoms symptoms do not provide effective solutions you have to move past the symptoms and then address the solutions when you see someone for instance please look up you see someone walking in failure living a defeated life trying to address the problem the obvious problem may not bring the final solution when you dig in and dig in and dig in eventually you will find out that there is a spiritual problem with that person maybe he has rejected jesus maybe he has refused the gospel now for someone who has refused the gospel 
the the probability for a life of defeat is 100 percent regardless how successful that person is anything can happen because there is no system of security it is only the name of the lord that is a strong tower and it is only the righteous that is allowed to run to it not anybody not god's creation that door does not just open his name becomes a strong tower when it you are the righteous you run into it and you are safe hallelujah so i thought tonight to begin um an exposition on what i titled the antichrist system now it's, it's going to be a series but i'll give them different topics but i just thought tonight to open us up to this mystery babylon this godless system that is the software that is behind the eels in our world it's important to understand that men have been programmed institutions have been programmed and we must carefully detect that spiritual software that is at the back of the decadence of families of territories of institutions of lives and so on and so forth are we in agreement praise the name of the lord revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 thank you jesus revelation chapter 11 and verse 15 the bible says and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever so i begin my teaching with the end of the story that whether we like it or not one day this prophecy will happen that a day will come regardless the arrogance of kings regardless the pride of men the power and the might of jesus the one who we have so hailed will compel this world that is a part of his creation to come into alignment and the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdoms of our lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever and ever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever he shall reign forever as it is now there's still confusion all across the world who is really lord there are nations that are fighting for supremacy the world powers fighting themselves but the bible tells us in psalm 24 and verse 1 the earth is the lord's the resources there it's called the fullness then the walls and the inhabitants they that dwell therein they all belong to him one more scripture please hmm. third john chapter one and verse two please just follow carefully let's read together if you can see it projected ready one to read please beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers i've done a teaching around this but you see this is a very serious statement even as your soul prospers even as your soul prospers that it is good that you prosper and be in health but ensure that whilst you prosper your soul also prospers can we add two more scriptures mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 from verse 36 jesus is teaching now mark chapter 8 and verse 36 for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world jesus is speaking business now profit he's talking gaining a language that everybody wants to hear what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul 
there is a system that has controlled our civilization until now in fact let me start it this way the bible clearly shows us that there is a conflict of two kingdoms everyone please say two kingdoms yes that men do not just live like animals we are not just homo sapiens there is a contention between two kingdoms the bible calls one the kingdom of darkness is that true and then the other the bible calls the kingdom of god's dear son so we know for a fact that there are two kingdoms all men regardless religion regardless your sociological orientation the bible is very clear as to the fact that we are immersed in a conflict that is between two kingdoms first information second information the bible clearly lets us know that this clash and this vendetta between these kingdoms predate our existence so we're in the middle of something that is older than our appearing here the war did not start with us it did not start from us are we together Revelation chapter 12, please, and verse 7. John was caught to the third heavens when he was banished. Theologically speaking, John was banished to die when he would not be burned in the hot oil and all of that. And then he was banished to an island called Patmos. And there he received the revelation of Jesus Christ. And now in chapter 12 from verse 7, these were some of the things that were shown john remember the angel told him right for these words are faithful and true then when we get to chapter 4 chapter 5 he was told come up hither and i will show you so john was taken down memory lane and he was told here an old story this is the fact that is in revelation does not mean it's a new story this is a very old story are we together and there was war in heaven I can preach all night on that sentence that means there is no life that is spared in heaven there was war if there was war in heaven then it is not unusual to have war around your life even in heaven where God dwells there was war there was war in heaven and then the Bible says Michael and his angels fought against the dragon the dragon fought with his angels uh oh his angels in heaven this should already give you a description of the kind of adversary we are dealing with that in heaven satan sold an idea to the angels that they saw god sitting on his throne in spite of the splendor of heaven there was something satan told them that they preferred his authority than the one who sits on the throne whoever has that kind of power you should pay attention to him follow me this night we're we are, we are on a journey that god will grant us grace over now we're examining because when we talk about earth earth is mad with all kinds of prejudices politics and the rest so let's look at heaven where christ himself is seated all this rubbish is going on in heaven the one who sits on the throne is there the miracle worker the way maker and yet there is a treacherous fellow selling an idea and according to scripture next verse let's go to verse 8 that he fought and he prevailed not the fact that satan could fight god remember I, please look up look up let me explain something to you we are tracing where this that has destroyed our world we are tracing where it came from politicians understand this this is what keeps you for hours in the house of assembly trying to come up with policies that correct the madness in society it matters this is not a christian message this is a message that eventually leads to national transformation is, is, this is not a Christian perspective we have to trace where the problem is coming from as at the time this problem started there was no religion as at the time this problem started there were no men of God as at the time this problem started there were no educational institutions so everything we are blaming is not the real problem follow this 
Please give out that scripture. The Bible says, once upon a time, it leaves us with a story that is a compass to give us wisdom on how to correct the ills in society and produce a territory that glorifies God, restores human dignity, and makes advancement that reflects the love of the Father. Are we together? So there is a problem we are trying to diagnose right now that Satan in the presence of God because of treachery and treason that he actually came to a point where he sold an idea we'll be reading shortly but that one third of the angels now we do not know how many angels are in heaven the Bible does not give us the figure but at least we know the ones who fell with Lucifer one third of these angels what gave him the audacity i will tell you satan's creation and satan's assignment is what gave him the audacity to believe i wish i had time would have dealt with what we have called the parable of talents have you read the parable of talents that says there was a man who came and gave on to three people five talents two talents and one talent that thing you see is not just a parable talking about money there is prophecy hidden in it it reveals something that happened years ago but anyway let's go back to our subject for tonight so satan prevailed not read on please the bible says neither was found any place for him in heaven so he's about to be displaced now and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent even at that time he was old called the devil so that there's no confusion and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so this is where the relocation happened now from heaven came to the earth next verse and i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our god day and night 11 and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony so satan was cast down from heaven he came to the earth now watch this scene one tells us that satan rebelled against god michael fought him scene two shows us the misery and the disgrace of satan is that true we see satan cast down in shame in fact it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for satan that dragon has come down with great fury the next time we hear about satan everybody on earth was under his control what a man what a spirit really not a man satan is not a man if he was a man there would have been a possibility for his sins being forgiven because salvation is for men so satan is not a man that's one of the reasons why he cannot be saved salvation is for men are we together now so satan is cast to the earth follow me to matthew chapter 4 jesus now comes in the flesh as the son of mary matthew chapter 4 let's start from verse 1 please and jesus was led up of the spirit this was after his baptism he was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil that same devil now so his audacity did not end he still believes anywhere he sees god he still has the strength what a stubborn man after many many years you see that so that you will know satan's determination to destroy you when you see who else he has tried you will know how serious he can stay to destroy you if you give him room and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights the bible says afterwards jesus now was unhungered verse 2 when the tempter came to him let's look at the context of the temptation he said number one 
if thou be the son of God command that these stones be made bread but he answered Jesus now and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God we'll discuss this later then the second temptation watch this Satan take it him take it who what does it mean to take somebody this was the guy who was cast down to the earth you would think it was game over and by the time we get here satan has that audacity to take him to a holy city and to set him at the pinnacle of the temple next verse and he said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands shall they bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against a stone next verse and jesus said unto him again it is written thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god now i'm interested in the last temptation if you are a christian and you are interested in what i'm saying please help me read ready one to read again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the kingdoms uh-huh and the glory of them stop please satan the first temptation has to do with your personal needs hunger feed yourself the second temptation has to do with your worship and your spirituality please keep that scripture there but the third temptation now has to do with the kingdom and the glory thereof satan took jesus into a high mountain this is not just climbing a hill no this is a prophetic language what kind of mountain is it that when you stand you see the glories of the whole world this is a spiritual location this is not a physical place that he took him maybe like a mountain and altitude no next verse verse 9 watch this and he saith unto him we finally arrived my place of interest all these things i will give thee <sighs> what a businessman this guy was cast from heaven empty in shame by the time jesus arrives his own earth satan is so wealthy he's saying don't think i am empty just bow to me and i will give you if you will fall down and worship me if you do not understand this you will not understand the system that controls the activities of men that means all the glory that satan acquired from adam he was not interested in it there was something else that was greater than that to him the worship so when Jesus came, he said, let me save you trouble. Let me save you going through the rigor of three and a half years, the cross, the grave. Just bow to me and I will give you these glories. Verse 10. And Jesus said unto him, get thee ten, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve this gives us a clue to what satan has been looking for that satan is not looking for the child of a barren woman that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking for the prosperity of a rich man that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking to cut short the life of someone all these things are not the things he's looking for there is something else that he's looking for you need to know what motivates the passion of satan this is it he met jesus and said instead of telling god on the throne to bow since you are his image just bow and i will give you everything are you getting that now watch this this also reveals the character of satan's way of doing business because here we see that satan is a businessman make reference to what i'm saying what shall it profit a man if he will gain and lose for you to do business there must be demand and supply and there must be people at the at both ends so satan is a businessman he's not just an accuser and that there is the character of his business are you seeing that now he acquires everything and tells you the only thing i need from you is your allegiance and you will have it and jesus said get thee behind me dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel 
comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.